So the MS Society, the Multiple Sclerosis Society, mm. right? Now, this is a charity that is, um, you know, obviously trying to raise funds for the research into multiple sclerosis. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's a non-profit organisation, and they rely on volunteers. Mm, mm. Now, there was a 90-year-old volunteer, right, who has worked for the MS Society for 60 years, mm. and her name was Fran Itkoff. She'd served them for 60 years, and <clears throat> her husband, late husband, ran the Long Beach Lakewood chapter prior to his death. She was left stunned when her bosses forced her to step down as a volunteer in January, mm. following an exchange with a colleague who asked her to use her pronouns in email signatures. Yeah. Now, mm. she was 90 years of age. She was asked to step away from her role because of statements that were viewed as not aligning with our policy of inclusion, the non-profit said on Thursday. Mm. And she apparently, um, when she was asked to use pronouns in her signature, her email mm. signature, mm. She replied saying, what are pronouns? Yeah. I, I, I don't understand what pronouns are. Mm. And they said, well, I'm sorry, those views don't align with the multiple sclerosis yeah. society. Mm. Um, her daughter said, to me it's ironic because they're saying they're inclusive, but they're excluding a 90-year-old disabled woman who has volunteered for 60 years. Mm. Um, can you explain to me what pronouns have to do with MS and also whether it is in some way um, discriminatory towards trans people to ask what a pronoun is. I mean, the cynic in me thinks that this sounds like ageism and somebody's found a convenient excuse to push this person, which, you know, it, never underestimate in small charitable organisations the sort of the viciousness of people uh, with regards to wanting to climb the ranks, so to speak. She's a sort of a, a chapter leader or something like that, it's it's just entirely possible that this is an opportunity to get rid of somebody who has been around for a long time. You know, people can be incredibly petty at a very uh, at very sort of low levels. With regards to whether or not this is offensive that somebody doesn't necessarily know in their 90s that, that trans people might like pronouns to be used, honestly, this is just sort of the erosion of any sort of semblance of trust in society. Actually, volunteering your pronouns, if you are trans, is fine if that's actually an important thing but actually you ought to be able to go through life with a default setting and that is assuming that if somebody has a female name uh, that they might in fact be female and have female pronouns that this is not the sort of thing that you have to double or triple think are, are you against companies saying that they should have pronouns on emails i'm against companies enforcing these sorts of things absolutely it's a personal so issue. many so many um yeah uh, companies now that i might deal with or mm. you end up with with having email correspondence with will reply and it will say after someone's name <clears throat> um you know she her yeah they them and they them he him all of that sort of stuff the first i have to say the first thing that it sort of rings the alarm bell for me when i see somebody putting pronouns in in an email signature or something like that is this is somebody who is potentially prone to causing trouble for no real reason that is the first thing that it says to me and it makes it puts me on guard and i would have thought actually so you're, you're discriminating company, against the use of pronouns yeah i think it's a red flag that says to me this is somebody who takes this stuff seriously and therefore is prone to take lots of things very seriously that need not be taken seriously. This is the sort of person who might take offence at an innocuous comment, at a throwaway line, at a misunderstanding. That is what it says to me. Now, I understand that for some people it's very important to sort of identify themselves. Fine. But I think the ubiquitous of this now tells me, because this is not actually something that is just used by trans people. Really, because trans people make up a really small percentage of the population. A lot of it is being used by normal people, heterosexual people, um, people who do not... become an ally. Yes, and they do it as a way to browbeat other people. That's what this is. And they do it to signal and to browbeat. And so for me, I don't sit there and think, oh, this might be a trans person. I sit there and I go, 
So I might have some trouble with you because if I say the wrong thing, you're going to get offended. I think it is, uh, sadly, I think it is a signal to say that this is somebody who is potentially somebody who is offended by a lot of things, which is in some ways very useful uh, to know that in advance. But I think it has taken on that kind of guise. Once upon a time... So would you find it difficult if you were an employer then and someone applied for a job using their pronouns this is hypothetical because you're not an employer, but if you mm. were, would that then ring alarm bells that this well, person might be troubling I your organisation? I don't know if you're able to ask people if, in the hiring process if they're trans or not. I don't know if you're allowed to. No, but I mean, within the process well, this of, is the the, of an email that If you they send. were trans, I'd say, OK, so this is somebody trying to identify themselves because they might, you know, because they are not uh, as they were born. And so but, there might be yeah. some con- confusion there. So this is a courtesy thing. If they weren't, I'd go this is somebody who might cause me a problem. That's the weird thing. But I then think how that, would you know from an email? I just think the, the odds are, the odds are it, that this is that kind of a person. And I'm afraid to say that it is just now so commonplace in society that gonna, people do this. Yeah, but they that, cause that, trouble. That is... And this is what we're talking about, is somebody in an email chain has asked an older person, use these pronouns, and we don't know if the person in the email chain was get, uh, trans themselves, uh, we don't know no, because it might just be a company-wide policy exactly. as well. Exactly, but then I also know that the company is going to cause trouble if I'm dealing with a company that enforces but these kind of rules. There are going to be some people that say, "Well, that makes the company really progressive because it's just showing that that those people who have different gender identities will feel a part of that company." It's not progressive at all. It is eroding the common foundations that mo- upon most people upon which most people live their lives. There are very small numbers of trans people in society, and we are more than happy for those people to say, "By the way." Because I was born this way, but I'm now this, or I look this way, but I am in fact this, this is how I like to identify, that's fine. If it's your average sort of white upper middle class uh, university educated uh, uh, woman with, I don't know, a degree in English who says, I, I present as they, them, it's just like, oh, do you now? Great. Okay. So you're, you're going to be one of well, them. Well, then how, how would you, and I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit here, but I how know. would you, um, so, okay, someone identifies differently, right? Mm. And they present as something. I present as male. So say, let's use me as an example. I yep. present as male most mm. of the time. And I, but I don't want you to use mm. he, him. Mm. I want you to use they, them. Mm. And it means a lot to me that you use they, them. How would I effectively, if I was emailing you and we hadn't met and I mm. hadn't told you, how would I effectively communicate that to you? Is this... I mean, uh, is this in terms of interviewing for a job? Oh, for in instance? any way, shape or form, any kind of correspondence, anything. Maybe if I'm going to work with you, and maybe this, if I was looking you for this you, show. Are you trans in this scenario or not? Well, I mean, if you are they, them, mm. you then uh, Presumably, being yes. non-binary, that's mm. the other sort of confusing thing about this, because trans doesn't always mean mm. um, I'm mean, male becoming female. Well, trans could yeah. be that I have transitioned from being male to being non-binary. If we're sort of doing business, one business to another, I take it as red. But if I'm a separate company, you can't enforce your pronoun policy on me. Yeah, well, that, that, but that's different to that. That's, that's If you're somebody who's hoping to be employed, you. then when we got, I would ignore it, basically, until we got to the interview stage, and then I'd ask you straight up, are you trans, are you not? Are you, in fact, just a, a, a straight person who thinks that this is culturally okay, well, trendy? What At which point then, it would probably count against you. Again, what about if then uh, I'm, I'm not non-binary, mm. I'm just me, I'm Christo, I'm he, him, I'm yeah. happy being he, him, but I had a name badge when we worked together saying he, him on there, which a lot of places do now. A lot of places that you go into now mm. have he, him written on a name badge or, or, or she, her for people that are, 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 aren't trans in any way, shape or form. Mm. Some straight people have them as well because, there's, 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 you know, not that sexuality always has anything to do with it. Mm. What would you then think about that? Well, it wouldn't change anything because you're doing it for other people. But I know that you're who you are and how you're identified because I can see it with my own eyes. But if other people have trouble with that, well, that's not, that's for them. But again, if this is my company, I'd say take it off. But if I'm just your colleague... Why would you say take it off if it was your Because company? it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. But, but if you have some staff who are he, him, and some staff who are they, them, would you not want everyone to wear them so everyone knows where they stand? No. The sheer numbers of, as I say, the number of trans people actually out in society is minuscule. We ha- seem to have this idea that it is commonplace. It is not. It is minuscule. So for the most part, most people in society do not require these badges. 
it, they, they do not require this movement. It is not important. And the very, as I say, it's based on trust and it's based on basic assumptions and society requires those two things. If you erode basic things like here is a man, he has always been a man, he presents as a man, but he's going to have a little thing here to make you double think, to make you double guess, just in case. And everybody else has to do that. Even if the entire company is 100% uh, not trans, everybody has to have these badges, then A, that's a waste of resources. And B, it's just chipping away at the sort of the fundamentals, which is that we all know everybody in this room is not transgender. But we have to affirm it. For so whose benefit do, do we have I to affirm it? Where I think you've got a really fair point and a really good point is the... I don't care. I've no issue with someone being non-binary or trans or whatever. Mm. They want to just tell me how they prefer to be referred to or what mm. their pronouns are. Whether I think they need to go in every single email you ever send, I'm not sure. But I've no problem with that. It, it, the problem that I think mm. has occurred, which I think you've identified, is the connection now between someone wanting their pronouns respected mm. and the idea that if a if a slip up occurs there'll be trouble yes and i think it's it's that connection that is the biggest issue and i think that that something has shifted from people being asked to be respectful of pronouns mm. which i don't think is an unreasonable thing i think it's kind i don't think it should be enforced but i think it's a kind thing to do if you told me you had a different yeah. pronoun <clears throat> i'd really do my best to be kind and, mm. and, and respect it. But it's the idea that, mm. oh, if, that your life depends on not getting it wrong. That's and why, your livelihood yeah. depends on not getting it wrong. Yes. And if you get it wrong, mm. you've got to have some evil intent. That's, that, that's yeah. got to mean you're an awful person rather than, oh, I just screwed up or I didn't quite understand or I'm having difficulty getting my head around it. Mm. And it's the sort of intolerance of people towards those who with good intent, with kind intent, might have a bit mm. of trouble getting their head around it that I, I think is, is, is the thing that has yeah. made this uh, uh, unpalatable to a lot of people. Yeah, the idea that you would have company-wide or charity-wide policies that mandate that this sort of thing has to be the case and if you don't comply, then, oh, you're in for it now. There has to it's be... It's the latter part of that. I yeah. don't even mind a company saying, look, let, let's try and respect well, no, pronouns. I do, because there has to be, in life, grey areas where people... Gay areas? There are. But there have to be grey areas oh. as well, um, where, where the elderly voters live. There have to be those sort of grey areas where actually trust can be built, where actually there has to be some understanding. Because actually I think most people agree that for trans people, when they come to you and they say, oh, I'm they, them, or he, her, or whatever it is, then it's a kind of a, okay, now I'm getting to know you a bit more, there's a bit of trust being built here because you're you know, talking to me about this. They're actually, you know, that's what I think human connections are based on. That's what healthy work environments are based on. Not on the HR department coming down and saying, ha we're going to make your life really miserable if you don't comply to this policy that affects literally none of you on the off chance that a trans person walks through the door or a non-binary person walks through the door. There is no benefit to that, ultimately. It is just well, about strong people. People would argue that the benefit is that those people who do have different gender identities will then feel that they are in a safe space and can prosper and then will do a better job. I would like to believe, actually, that society is moving in a direction where you don't need those kind of signals to say, actually, your fellow co-workers are decent human beings. Again, if you're having to mandate things, that's not actually a All healthy right. well, environment. Well, let's see what, what you think. I mean, send us a text on this, by the way, or you can tweet me, Christo underscore. Radio has, has the enforced nature of the pronoun business actually is that the thing that is the issue here like i don't know that many people but maybe i'm wrong that would have an issue trying to respect pronouns i think that's a nice thing to do it's it's the sort of enforced nature of it and if you don't then you're done for 